standardizing, right, everything. So how do I compare two normally distributed situations? I want to standardize them, put them all on the standard normal distribution curve, and then I can compare things. So SND represents standard normal distribution. This is kind of like messy, but... Um, so anytime I write SND, now you know what it represents, the SND curve. Um, so why are these scores important? These scores are sta these standardized scores um, represent a lowercase z, and it basically tells you the number of standard deviations away from the mean a data value lies. So here is an SND curve. My z scores are on the horizontal scale on an SND curve. Okay, so if I say that I'm talking about z scores, I'm automatically on an SND curve. If I talk about a standard normal distribution curve, I'm automatically talking about z scores. They go hand in hand. Okay. The thing about this is that the mean is always zero and the standard deviation is always one. So if I'm on an SND curve, automatically the mean is zero, automatically the standard deviation is one, automatically I'm talking about z-scores. If I'm talking about z-scores, automatically I'm on an SND curve, automatically the mean is zero, automatically the standard deviation is one. Okay? Hand in hand. So that means that the center of this curve is zero. So that means one standard deviation above the mean would be 0 plus 1 or 1. And that means two standard deviations above the mean would be positive 2. Three standard deviations above the mean would be positive 3. You know, four standard deviations would be 4, blah, 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 blah. Typically, we stay around 3, right? One standard deviation below the mean, 0 minus 1 is negative 1. Two standard deviations below the mean represents negative 2. Three standard deviations below the mean, negative three, and I can go past that. I mean, obviously this curve is a little bit inaccurate with the area under the curve and the location of these, but whatever. Um, it's not going to be perfect. Um, so if I say um, I have a z-score of positive one, or a data value has a z-score of positive one, that data value is one standard deviation above the mean. So if I look at this, you know, IQ score curve here, what would I expect my z-score to be for a um, data for IQ score of 130? Well, we know that it's two standard deviations above the mean. So I would expect the z-score to be positive two. That's the location of it. If I have a z, uh, if I have a data value here, an IQ score of 55, I know that 55 is three standard deviations below the mean. So I would expect that z-score for this um, IQ score to be negative three. So um, you can actually find the z-score, which is a location. So again, the z-score is the actual number of standard deviations away from a mean a data value lies. So if, a, if an IQ score is positive 3, I know it's located 3 standard deviations above the mean. If I have a z-score that is 2.5, I know that it's 2.5 standard deviations above the mean located here. Then I can go into more detail about percentages and such, you know, and that. Um, now I can get even more detailed um, with z-scores, meaning I can find a z-score of, it doesn't have to be one, two, or three standard deviation of, of the mean. I can find z-scores in between, for data values in between. Like what would be the z-score of a data value that is 120 or an IQ score that is 120? That's not on here. That's not exactly one, two, or three standard deviations from, from the mean. So how would I determine that z-score? You have a formula. So it's x minus mu over sigma. X is the data value, mu is your mean, sigma is your standard deviation. Now this is in population notation, right? Um, if it's in sample notation, then it's just X minus X bar over S. It's the same formula, it's the same movement, but, you know, sample notation instead of population notation. Don't mix up X with X bar. X is the data value, right? X bar is a mean. So I take the data value, I subtract the mean, and I divide by the standard deviation, and I can calculate the z-score. So for example, um, you know, what is the z-score of, using the IQ score stuff, what is the z-score of, I don't know why I can't write neatly, but of an IQ score of, uh, let's just say, A, 145, right? Now, I could determine that without even doing the formula, but I'm going to show you how the formula gives you the same thing as uh, what I'm going to determine. IQ score is over here, positive, right? Um, three standard deviations above the mean. That's where the location of that IQ score is. So I would expect the um, Z score to be positive three. Well, let's go ahead and find it 
using the formula and see if I get positive 3. The data value is 145. We know that the mean of IQ scores is 100 and the standard deviation is 15. So the mean is 100 and the standard deviation is 15. So I get basically 45 over 15, which is positive 3. I put 3.00 because our round off rule is um, to the nearest, let me write it over here, to the nearest hundredth, which is two uh, digits to the right of the decimal place. So I'm representing those two. Okay, now that was an easy one because I know the location of 145. But what about a z-score of, you know, 120? 120 is not directly, um, you know, one, two, or three standard deviations of the mean. So how do I determine that? So I could find a z-score of 120. 120 minus 100 over 15. So now I have 20 over 15. You know, plug it into your calculator or whatever. If it's a perfect value, you can use that. But this one's 1.33333. I round to the nearest hundredth, 1.33. It's positive, right? A positive z-score implies that that value is greater than the mean. Well, that makes sense, right? 120 is greater than 100, which is above the mean. And I'm more than, two stand, uh, more than one standard deviation above the mean. I'm exactly 1.33, approximately, uh, I should say approximately, 1.33 standard deviations above the mean. That's the location of this um, data value, this IQ score in this case. Um, let me do one more. What is the IQ score, uh, what is the Z score for an IQ score of 58? Okay, well, 58, not perfect, right? That's like somewhere over here, I don't know. But I expect it to be less than or greater, more than two standard deviations below the mean. Well, let me see what I get when I do this formula. I get Z is equal to the data value, 58, minus 100 over 15. Um, I'm just going to straight up plug it into the calculator. 58 minus 100. And you can see that, um, you know, I'm expecting a negative number. First of all, because 58 is less than the center, so I'm expecting it to be negative. I'm expecting it to be, um, you know, over here somewhere, right? So I'm expecting it to be like negative 2 point something. It's close to 55, so I'm expecting it to be close to negative 3. Let's see if I'm right. Mm -hmm. Negative 2.8. And actually, that's exactly negative 2.8, so I don't need to use the approximation. Um, negative 2.80 using my round off rule. So that means, right, I expected a negative z-score. A negative z-score implies that the value is less than the mean, and it is, 58. It's lower than the mean. It's exactly in the location. I get the exact z-score that I expected based on where I know it is on this curve. So a z-score is um, the actual number of standard deviations away from the mean that a data value lies. And this applies to all, you know, normally distributed cases, not just IQ scores. That's just the example I'm doing here, right? Um, what do you guys expect? I would, you know, a z-score of 100 for this case. Um, for, this, for this IQ score, 100, what would you expect that to be? It's in the middle. It's actually the mean. So, you know, you would expect it, or I hope you would expect it to be zero, but if I want to calculate it, right, I take the data value minus the mean and divide by the standard deviation, 100 minus 0, right? Z score is 0 because it is the mean. So, you know, there's a correspondence, there's a relationship, right, between these guys and this standard curve. But if I want to compare different scenarios, different type of normally distributed data to each other and they have different means and standard deviations, well, how would I do that? I standardize it. That's why this is so important. You're going to see it all the time. I standardize it. I have to come here. Otherwise, I can't compare it. If a z-score um, for something is 2.4 and a z-score for something else is 0.5, that 2.4, that's a better score in general than that whatever that is that gave you that 0.5. So um, standard normal distribution curve, very, very important. Um, z-scores, you're going to hear a lot about z-scores. Um, and they, again, one more time. If I'm talking about a standard normal distribution curve, automatically this applies. Um, the mean is zero, the standard deviation is one, and automatically I'm talking about z-scores. If I'm talking about z-scores, automatically I'm on an SND curve. Automatically the mean is zero, the standard deviation is one. And you know what? Let me even go further. Let me go and ask you, you know, what percentage of a 
data values, if they're normally distributed, have, I have a, a Z scores between negative one and one, approximately 68%, right? That's the same thing as the empirical rule. Approximately 68% lie within or between one standard deviation of the mean. Um, what, what percentage of z-scores lie between negative 2 and positive 2? Approximately 95% of z-scores should be between negative 2 and positive 2. You know, what percent of z-scores are between uh, negative 3 I guess I'll do it here. Negative 3 and positive 3. Approximately 99.7% of your z-scores lie between a value of negative 3 and positive 3. Right? That goes along with the empirical rule. Again, we say approximately. You're going to get detailed later because you can actually find exact cases using your calculator. That's, you know, when we get to um, a future chapter. But, um, you know, the range rule of thumb applies here as well. What, what would the range rule of thumb state, you know, with z-scores? Well, the range rule of thumb said that typical values, right, non-significant values are between or within two standard deviations of the mean. So what does that mean for z-scores? That means that, you know, if I have a z-score of negative 2 and positive 2, things in between that are not significant. They're typical, Right. If I go bigger than a z-score, and these are z-scores, right? If I go bigger than a z-score of 2, positive 2, then I'm significantly high. Then I have a significantly high type of case. If I'm less than negative 2 in my z-scores, then I'm significantly low. But that goes along with what we said before anyway. So, where was it? Like, this 58, right? This IQ score 58, was it significantly high or significantly low? It has a z-score of negative 2.8. That's less than negative 2. That means that it's more than two standard deviations below the mean. So this is a significantly low IQ score. What about an IQ score of 120? Well, that's a z-score of 1.33. So it's 1.33 standard deviations above the mean, which is in between or within two standard deviations. So this is not significant. This is typical. This is a typical z-score. So 120 is a typical IQ score. Um, you know, z-score of 3 is a pretty big z-score, right? Positive 3. That's 3 standard deviations above the mean. That's more than 2, right? So the z-score is greater than 2. It's significantly high. That means that this um, IQ score is significantly high. And that goes along with what we said before anyway. Um, 